Coming up on American Black Journal, native Detroiter Sean Robinson talks about her new role and about opportunities for women in Hollywood. Also the latest on a new Detroit training center for the skilled trades. Plus, we'll meet a young jazz pianist who is turning heads in the music world. Stay right there. American Black Journal starts now. From Delta faucets to Bear Paint, Masco Corporation is proud to deliver products that enhance the way consumers all over the world experience and enjoy their living spaces. Masco, serving Michigan communities since 1929. Support also provided by the Cynthia and Etzel Ford Fund for Journalism at Detroit Public TV. The DTE Foundation proudly supports 50 years of American Black Journal in covering African American history, culture, and politics. The DTE Foundation and American Black Journal partners in presenting African American perspectives about our communities and in our world. Also brought to you by AAA, Nissan Foundation, Ally, Impact at Home, UAW Solidarity Forever, and viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson, and I'm so glad you've joined us. Emmy Award winning journalist, television host, and Detroit native Sean Robinson has added a new title to her resume. She made her debut as the executive producer of two original movies on the Lifetime Network in partnership with Bishop T.D. Jakes. The films are based on the Seven Deadly Sins book series by African American author Victoria Christopher Murray. They're titled Lust and Envy. Here's a scene from Envy, followed by my conversation with Sean. I don't trust her. Can we just focus on the meeting, please? Can we focus on not letting a stranger into our business? I understand how you feel. Okay, right. Reagan, like, just talk to me, please. <laughs> we need to get this right. I understand that. We could lose one of our biggest clients. I know. But I do love your pitch. It's really good. Yeah, and most of them are Keisha's ideas. She should be in this meeting. I'm not gonna allow a stranger to come into our office. Our company depends on this. Yeah, but I'm just trying to do the right thing. I, I, I know I may have just met her, but... She's my sister, Reagan. It just feels wrong. It's simple. We're sticking to my plan. When Justice gets here, Keisha's not gonna be in this office. Sean Robinson, welcome to American Black Journal and welcome home to Detroit. Thank you, Stephen. I love being a part of anything my city is doing. Anytime I get to visit uh, in person or virtually, I'm in. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. So of course you've had a really, really remarkable career uh, in Hollywood, but this new work is kind of a different turn. Um, let's start with the names for uh, these programs, Lust and Envy. Now there's something kind of ominous about those words. Well, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, first of all, I actually started my career in Detroit uh, WGPR, Channel 62, a long, long time ago. Uh, but most people who know me nationally know me from Access Hollywood, where I spent 16 years covering the red carpet uh, and interviewing, you know, all the celebrities uh, in Hollywood. Um, and I started thinking towards the end of that period what I wanted to do, what I wanted the next or additional chapter to look like. And I knew that I wanted to uh, be a content creator to produce content. And, you know, as journalists, we're really producers at heart because we've had to, you know, produce our own stories many times coming up the ranks and we had to have a vision for our stories. And so a friend of mine who worked at Essence Magazine at the time, this is back in 2016, 
told me about a galley of this book, Lust, that he received. It had not reached store shelves yet. It had just, um, the galley came to his desk and he said, Sean, it's written by author Victoria Christopher Murray. She's writing each of the seven deadly sins. And the first one, Lust, is about to come out. You should call her and option the entire series. And so that's what I did. I knew Victoria, so I called her up and optioned these, uh, these books. And I kind of pitched them around town. I knew that I wanted to make them into movies. And um, it was, you know, a year of really pitching. And then uh, what happened was Bishop T.D. Jakes did a partnership with Lifetime, who I'd also pitched the books to. And he, through his producing uh, partner, called me up and said, Sean, you remember those books that you pitched to us about a year ago? Do you still have them? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, Bishop T.D. Jakes would like to executive produce them with you uh, for Lifetime. And I was like, uh, yeah, OK. <laughs> so, um, so that's what we did. So hopefully, because I've been telling everybody in Detroit, hopefully you've already seen Lust and then Envy, the second book in the series, also a movie, the encore presentation of Envy airs tonight uh, in Detroit uh, at 6 p.m. So make sure you tune in for that. So yeah, that's what it's been. Now I'm an executive producer for the first time through Lifetime and I'm I'm so thrilled. I'm really, really happy. Yeah, so so that's an important milestone to reach as well uh, because even though it's 2021, uh, things aren't all fair, things aren't all equal and it's still tough uh, for women in Hollywood and uh, of course for black women in Hollywood to get opportunities to do the kind of work uh, that you're doing, executive producing, uh, is is kind of the height of uh, yes. work in in Hollywood, and it's it's still pretty exclusive. Yes, and that's why I love that I have this partnership with Lifetime because, um, you know, as a black female, you know, we run into many closed doors here in Hollywood, and listen, every sector, but uh, in terms of Hollywood. Um, it is very, very tough. And so for this door to be opened and for me to be able to open the doors for other black women, for other women of color, for people of color is really important for me because uh, I know how tough it is. Listen, it's, it's, it's tough for everybody, but equally um, it, 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 it's, it's extremely, uh, you know, you have to have a lot of perseverance out here. Mm -hmm. So to be a person that is able to create opportunities for other people is um, it's just a thrill for me. And that's that's how I want to use my platform and create great movies. You know, at the at the end of the day, it has to be entertaining. And who can't identify, Stephen, with those temptations that we are confronted with? Listen, I was raised in a church and, you know, that's what the sermon is usually about, resisting temptation. And so these are morality tales, lust and envy. And I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you name the five other deadly sins? You've got lust, envy. Gluttony. Yep. Um, uh, uh, boy. Greed. Greed. And greed. <laughs> pride. Pride. Wrath. And sloth. And sloth. Right. Yes. It's always my favorite. <laughs> sloth is your favorite. <laughs> okay. That's the one to resist. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So uh, we, you know, we've got this entire book series, and hopefully, uh, with your support, we'll be able to do the other five deadly sins because we need to know about all of them and resisting the temptation of all of them. So yeah. hopefully, everybody, yeah. yeah, it tunes in. So, so is it easier, do you think, in 2021 uh, for you to be doing this work uh, than, it, than it has been? I mean, are we headed in the right direction uh, well, in Hollywood with getting rid of those barriers? Well, you know, th th listen, I think on some level there will always be barriers, but I think it is, it, you know, it's really up to us to uh, keep pushing forward 
and keep once again opening the doors my, my parents and grandparents always taught me if god gives you a platform use it to give back and so that's what i'm trying to do my focus not only is creating good content but also creating uh, these opportunities. And, you know, for years, you know, listen, Stephen, for years when I was at Access Hollywood covering the red carpet, you know, somebody could be the toast of the town one year, riding high, getting awards, you know, accolades. And then the next year they can't get arrested. Okay. So it's, it's, you know, it's a tough business. Yeah. So, um, you know, we need more people who are able, you know, to reach back and help other people, oh, you know, get those job opportunities. And, and so, um, you know, I'm really thrilled. I'm really very happy. And hopefully there's a lot more to come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're also working through your foundation to kick those doors open for women around the country. So. Yes, yes. So my foundation is called the Sean Foundation for Girls. And we um, help level the playing field for girls from underserved and underrepresented communities. And we work in five key areas and those are represented by the acronym of my name, S-H-A-U-N. So S is for STEM, science, technology, engineering and math, H is health, a is arts, U is unity, and N is neighborhoods. So if there is a nonprofit that is doing work in one of those five key areas, we would possibly be a resource for them. I kick things off in Detroit with a grant um, to the incredible organization Alternatives for Girls. And one of the things that they do is help rescue girls and young women uh, from you know, sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And they are phenomenal. So we gave them a grant and we also did an initiative in Detroit, uh, a, a sex trafficking prevention workshop to help our young girls learn about what, you know, what's happening out there, how pimps are luring girls into the uh, sex trafficking industry. It's not just happening overseas. It's happening right in our own backyards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the, the work that you're doing, uh, what do you... What do you hear from young women about the challenges that they face uh, right now and, and how different that might be from what you faced uh, as a young person here in Detroit? Well, you know, uh, Stephen, right now my uh, foundation is working on a documentary about implicit bias towards Black girls, mm -hmm. which is as we're having this national conversation about Black Lives Matter, um, I'm focusing on the lives of Black girls and how uh, the, the biases that they face every single day coming from the for, coming from adults black and white that um, are are preventing them from achieving their dreams that are you know affecting their self-esteem and their chances for success and how we all as a society suffer when a marginalized group isn't able to reach their fullest potential. We all suffer as a society. And, you know, it's interesting, Stephen, um, I was having this conversation about the documentary. And as I've been telling people about the work that we're doing, um, inevitably somebody says, you know, well, what about black boys? Black boys, you know, black boys are having it very tough too. Well, you know, black boys. And I said, you are absolutely right. Black boys are having it really tough. I am focusing on black girls. I will help you focus on, you know, what you're passionate about. And I will focus on, you know, um, putting black girls at the center. And it's so interesting, Stephen, because whenever I mention black girls, somebody inevitably says, well, what about black boys? When I'm talking about black boys, no one ever says, well, what about black girls? Wow. Wow. Black people have a hard time keeping black girls in the center. And that's what I am doing with, uh, with the foundation. And as black females, we're used to being pushed to the side so that other people, um, you know, can, can, can rise. And we, and we need to start focusing on our girls. It doesn't take anything away from anybody else, but we need to make sure that their needs are being met. It's been two years since the city of Detroit announced a new $30 million job training center was coming to the city's west side. Thanks to an investment by the Michigan Regional Council of Carpenters and Millwrights, the skilled trade school is being built right in the neighborhood where I lived as a small child. And despite some delays caused by the pandemic, that project is nearing completion and about to open. 
this fall. One Detroit producer, Bill Kubota, has been following the center's progress, and he has this update. Detroit's west side, the scene two years ago along I-96 near Grand River and Livernois. I remember this being empty. It really wasn't nothing over here. Dead house and abandoned houses, that's the only thing I remember over here. So drugs and been in fights around here. Those were the bad old days for Antoine Hamilton, who stepped out of prison not long ago after a 15-year stint. This is the same neighborhood where our Stephen like Henderson lived for a time and where he established his tuxedo project, creating a community space in his childhood home. Yeah, talk about what the neighborhood was like in the 1970s. When I first moved over there, the neighborhood was fantastic. Every home was filled, every lot was uh, clean, no vacancies, and each house on the block was full with people and kids. Yeah. Abandoned, decaying houses still wait to come down, but at the end of the block, a transformation. The talk in this part of town, now action, with the Carpenters and Millwrights trade school taking shape. Jesus was a carpenter. I'm a follower of Jesus, and I'm a carpenter. James McCullough, age 22, a Detroit East Sider. He's working on the school where he'll be taking classes when it's done. I've done things from the exterior panels, those walls, right over there, to door installation, installing door frames, to being the guy that you know pumps water. Whatever is uh, asked to be required of me, that's what I, that's what I do. I mean, the reality is that uh, men and women of color have not felt welcome in a range of trades and have been uh, underrepresented. Back in March 2019, Mayor Mike Duggan joined residents, the Tuxedo Project, and the Carpenters Union, announcing the new trade school to replace their smaller facility in suburban Ferndale. The Detroit building boom's been threatened by a shortage of trades workers who live within city limits. You never really heard about it. I still find it amazing today that, that uh, a lot of people are like, the trades, what's the trades? And you tell them about it and they're like, I never heard about it. If you really want to communicate to Detroiters that you want to recruit Detroiters, let's get a training center in the city. That'd be a pretty major statement. There's uh, 130,000 vehicles go by this facility every day on I-96, so they won't be able to miss it. People pass by here, they'll see it. There's a bus stop right behind us. They could bring a bus to school. I mean, transportation, it's, it's right here, right? You know what I mean? You can come from all over to come here. Juan Ortiz has been recruiting returning citizens who trained at the state prison system's vocational village. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had a long time to think about it. <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do until I met Juan. I met him in the prison. When we'd go there to talk to guys and he was sitting around, I started talking to him. He sold me on his dream and I followed him. Within the first week I was home, I had a job. Hamilton's on the job or in school, putting in 60 plus hour weeks. A bit of a lull after the first COVID shutdown, but the carpenters are busy now. It's definitely a good thing to do in terms of making a living. Starting off at 19 an hour, uh, minimum wage that isn't, isn't even close to that. I was making like 9.45 at one point. That was a family dollar store. As a carpenter apprentice, he's earning while he learns. It's gonna max out at like $34 an hour, so yeah. It's definitely good in terms of making a living. I'm in the process of trying to get my cousins in here. They, uh, we working on it right now. So I'm, I always preach the union at school, you know? All my work that I've done has been inside of the city, from the train station to the book tower to this very same school that I'm gonna be attending. This new facility will give the instructors the space they need, the tools they need, the technology they need to meet the demands of what the industry needs for today. So our capacity could go up to 1,500 students in this one facility. This area, this structure is held up by wood columns and the wood beams, and then the roof deck, and then it gets glass around the front for the main entrance. So about another month or so, we'll have this closed in. Yeah, it's interesting using wood, huh? Well, that's part of what carpenters do. So we want to showcase in our main lobby, things that carpenters do, high-end trim, the flooring work, we'll have polished concrete done by the carpenters. When you walk in, you're gonna look around and see things that carpenters do. Along with those flourishes, they're working on other ways to attract visitors. We can have contractor symposiums, career fairs, in a space that would hold up to 600 people. So 
Also, we want to make that available to the community. If, if there's events that they want to have, our doors will be open to them. Expect hundreds of Detroit residents to come out of this school with new careers these next few years. That's what the union says. The grand opening, later this summer. Not only just being a carpenter, yo, it's, it's the brotherhood, you know? Being able to rub elbows with different guys and help keep jobs and learn different things, new things. I learn something new every day. This is 147,000 square feet. This building is for our members and built by our members. But I think the best part is what it means to our members. They're the owners of the project. My neighborhood being brought back. This right here is, is it's gonna be here for a while. And finally today, April is Jazz Appreciation Month. And today we're shining the spotlight on jazz pianist Alexis Lombre. She is a graduate of the University of Michigan and she's based out of Detroit in her hometown of Chicago. Alexis just dropped a new single titled Come Find Me, and one Detroit's Will Glover caught up with the talented young musician. Well, um, I grew up with, um, well, jazz was always loved in my family. It was loved deeply by my grandparents. Um, and that love passed down to my mother and then she passed it down to me. I first started playing piano when I was nine. Uh, first it was classical training. So started classical then for two years and I went to jazz and I did both at the same time. And then my teach, my classical teacher was like, you need to pick one. And I was like, I'm picking jazz, bye. What you're praying. Um, I'm originally from Chicago, but I went to University of Michigan. I just graduated there. So um, and while I was there, I realized I was close to Detroit and I, you know, just went to jam sessions and, you know, um, started getting gigs and Detroit was really welcomed me so easily. It was so easy just to, and I, it, you know, such a warm family environment. I mean, Detroit and, and Chicago are really like sister cities in a lot of ways. Um, so Detroit in my development, I mean, you know, lots of times while I was studying at University of Michigan, I was also being, an, um, I don't know, saxophonist Wendell Harrison, he's a Kresge artist. Um, you know, he, I just practiced at his house and he would give lessons and, you know, many, many other mentors, Marion Hayden. Talk to me about this new single and why you named it Come Find Me. What was the inspiration behind it? Take me through a little bit of the thought process of Alexis around this. Well, I started writing this song um, while I was in college at University of Michigan. We started writing it in, in the practice rooms. And um, I took it to my friend, um, producer Eddie Burns' house back in Chicago. And he put this kind of like, um, hip hop R&B beat onto it. And before that, I've never even really performed non-jazz originals in public. So I was kind of terrified, like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> my fan base is gonna hate me. I'm doing something different. Um, but melody and lyrics kind of come together. So Come Find Me was just there. Like when I, when I, when I, figured out the melody, the, those lyrics were there, but I was wondering like in what context it was. So at first I was writing the lyrics and it was like about this dude, like come find me when you wanna treat me right and you wanna act right. And <laughs> then it started turning around. Like I had this kind of spiritual session, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, I love the Lord. And it just kind of ended up being a conversation between me and God and God saying, come find me. What advice do you have for people who are just starting out or what advice do can you pass on that you've received? I guess the best thing I would honestly say is to know yourself, you know, and to get to know yourself and realize like how much of yourself do you know? Um, because once you know yourself, you can know what kind of decisions you want to make, what kind of people you want to be around, 
and you can start visualizing where you want to see yourself. But if you don't know yourself, you're just kind of like a summation of everybody around you. And if you're not around all the right people all the time, then you're just kind of drifting in the wind. If you want somewhere to go. And one more jazz note. You can learn about Detroit's jazz history by checking out the Detroit Public Television documentary, Detroit Jazz City at dptv.org slash jazz. That's gonna do it for us this week. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about our guests at americanblackjournal.org. And you can always keep up with us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll see you next time. From Delta faucets to bare paint, Masco Corporation is proud to deliver products that enhance the way consumers all over the world experience and enjoy their living spaces. Masco, serving Michigan communities since 1929. Support also provided by the Cynthia and Etzel Ford Fund for Journalism at Detroit Public TV. The DTE Foundation proudly supports 50 years of American Black Journal in covering African American history, culture, and politics. The DTE Foundation and American Black Journal partners in presenting African American perspectives about our communities and in our world. Also brought to you by AAA, Nissan Foundation, Ally, Impact at Home, UAW Solidarity Forever and viewers like you. Thank you.